Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen, I just realized that I never say my name, um, but my name is Jalen. <laughs> and today I'm doing a Q&A, my first one I've ever done. I recently passed 500 subscribers on here, which blows my mind because I just joined a couple months ago and it's just so cool that people care about what I read and what I say on here. And I'm just really appreciative for all of you who've subscribed and who watch my content, who leave comments and talk to me about books. Books are my favorite thing in the world, and so um, I'm just happy to have an outlet to talk about books and engage with you all, and I'm just really loving my time on here. So yeah, and I also recently passed um, 2,000 followers on Instagram. I joined that a little over a year ago on Bookstagram, and loving it. And so I put a story up on my Instagram just asking um, for any questions my followers may have. Um, I know a good amount of you also follow me on Instagram. And so I have a list of questions here. I got a good amount, which is awesome. And so yeah, they're gonna be mostly bookish, some, you know, more about me. I never really talk about myself on this channel. I just talk about books. So um, yeah, I'm excited to, you know, share some more about my life, I guess. So, so before we get into the q and A, I I will show what I'm drinking as always. Today's beer is called Rosé. Goze. It's usually called a Goza, I think, um, but it's a Goza style ale with hibiscus added. So it's a 4.2% beer from Hoofhearted Brewing. Cool. I don't know if I've had a beer from Connecticut before, but um, I have a local shop here in Phoenix that is basically like, like a convenience store for beer cans. And so I just always go there and look around for um, cool beer cans and stuff. I think also, if you, if you haven't seen my Instagram before, I do perfect pairings for my book reviews. And so like for this one, I already got an idea. It shows this woman like straggling the sky um, and the Grim Reaper. I think I'm gonna pair it with the Pisces, very similar, it's fun. Um, yeah, so let me try it real quick. Ooh, it's really good. It's very light and like drinkable and not too, not too sour, but yeah, I'm digging it. Okay, let's get into the questions. I'm just gonna go at random here. First question is, what is one book everyone should read? I'll pick a fiction and nonfiction. For nonfiction, I would say, kind of going off the top of my head here, um, So You Want to Talk About Race by Joma Luo. I think that book is just invaluable and I'm so grateful for it as just kind of like a great reference tool to you know remind yourself about how to, dis to discuss and analyze race and the issues that are present in our everyday lives and just being conscious of um, systemic racism. And then for fiction, I would say, I'm kind of stuck between two. I know the question asked for one. I'm just gonna give two, I'm sorry, breaking the rules. Um, One would be The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. I think that book is so smartly written and um, you know, obviously timely and is also kind of non-fictional in the sense that it's based on a real school. Um, but that book is incredible. Highly recommend it if you haven't read it already. It's a very quick read too. Um, and then the other one is more of a classic and that would be East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I read that book about like a year and a half ago, I want to say, and I absolutely loved it. I think it's quite close to being a perfect novel. Um, I just loved every single thing about it. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It's a longer book, but which I don't usually read, but I highly recommend it. It's just incredible. There's so much to parse through in that novel, and I would want to reread it soon because I just loved it so much. And I feel like I've changed as a reader over the last year or two, and so. I'm curious to see how I take it on a reread, but I would highly recommend East of Eden. The next question is favorite brewery. For this one, I share them all the time on this channel, but it's Ren House. They're a local um, brewery here in Phoenix, and they make incredible beers. Their focus, at least to me, seems to be in hazy IPAs, which is like my jam, but they also make really great like fruited sours and stouts. Most recently, they came out with this beer called Pie Thief, which is an imperial pumpkin beer, which I really um, enjoyed from last year, and I'm excited to try this year's version. But yeah, they make excellent beer. I haven't had a bad beer from them actually and yeah I highly recommend them. If you're ever visiting Phoenix like and you like beer it's the number one place you have to go to. They have a ton of great breweries but that one I think is the standout um, in Arizona. Next question. How has your reading changed since joining Bookstagram and how would you like to see it keep changing? And I think the number one biggest change is that I'm reading so much more than I used to. During law school for most of it I kind of like dropped off reading a lot and I picked it up, I think, like in my second or third year of law school again, and I've gradually just been increasing how many books I've been reading. And it's like last year, I think I read almost 40, and this year I'm already at 71, and the year is not even closed yet. So yeah, I've just been reading so much more, and Bookstagram and Booktube kind of keep me accountable for my reading. I want to, you know, keep putting content out, so I have to keep reading. And I just love engaging with people on both platforms and just talking about books, so that makes me excited to buddy read books or join book clubs and talk about books further and so I just think it's a great way of one keeping yourself accountable and two just I don't know enjoying more content which 
I guess for me, makes me read more. And so I think that's the biggest change for sure. And I'm so glad I joined it because it's just been phenomenal meeting so many cool people on both platforms and I'm just, I'm loving it. I don't see myself ever stopping. And a related question is, is it hard to run a book review account? And I would say kind of, um, kind of leaning yes, actually. I found like the formal reviewing process of having like a bookstagram and booktube is kind of difficult in the sense of, I guess more so on bookstagram, it's really hard to post like very frequently. Like I, I find it really hard to post daily. Um, lately I've been kind of slacking on my posting on that platform and it just gets hard to constantly write a review for every book that you're reading, especially for me because my the theme of my account is carrying books with beer cans or cool wine bottles that match the aesthetic of the book and I found that to be I guess lately a little bit limiting and I'm actually changing that about my Instagram I'm gonna just you know post a perfect pairing when I have one and if I don't I'm just gonna post a review I don't know I, I want to be less focused on matching beer and books and make it more so just about books and beer occasionally I think that'll help me review more books quickly and I do want to make that a goal of mine going into 2021 is to review every single book that I read on bookstagram obviously on booktube I talk about books like in my wrap-up so I kind of review them that way but yeah that's definitely a goal of mine yeah it is pretty tough I'm curious to know other book reviewers that are watching this what do you think about that do you think find it hard um, what helps you like stay accountable for reviews yeah I'd appreciate any tips on that next question do you use goodreads to keep track of reading tbr etc and I do but I absolutely loathe goodreads like I hate it so much it's so it's like barely usable and it's shocking to me that and also Amazon owns it now, which sucks, but I just find it so crazy that people have just been kind of like accepted Goodreads for what it is, including myself. Like I feel like us bookish people could like join forces and make a good platform because you can't even like search for books on there that well. Like you, you might get your result and you might not. You can't do half star reviews. It's just a mess. And then like the friending is really confusing and it's hard. You can't like search for people on the app. At least I don't think you can. It's just a hot mess and I really don't like it, but I use it because my friends are on there and it is a good way of at least like tracking your books that you're reading throughout the year and your star rating for them. At the very least, that's, that's like all I use it for. But yeah, I really hate it. Next question is, do you plan on living in Arizona long term and what is the best indie bookstore in Phoenix? So for the first question, I really enjoy living in Phoenix. I think it's a great city. It's a lot of development going on currently. I know COVID kind of like they're wrenching things and it's a little weird and you can't really enjoy much right now but um, I think Phoenix has seen a lot of growth and I really like it especially the neighborhood that I live in however I've lived here since I was five years old and I don't think I'm gonna spend the rest of my life here I would love to um, explore live in a couple cities for I don't know a couple years or one year I don't know but um, CJ from CJ Reads who actually asked this question she lives in Portland and that's a city that I absolutely love and I could totally see myself spending some amount of time there I also love Seattle, the Pacific Northwest I just really enjoy, and so I definitely, it's kind of a goal of mine to spend some time of my life living in one or both of those cities. Yeah, but aside from that, I don't really have any current plans to move. Um, I just moved to a new house here in Phoenix last year and really love it. So um, for the time being, I'm an Arizona boy, for sure. And then for best indie bookstore in Phoenix, um, we have one like major one, it's called Changing Hands. There's a location in two cities. But the one that I love the most is the Phoenix location because they have a book bar um, in the bookstore. And you could grab a pint or a glass of wine and walk around the bookstore and enjoy it. And that was just so awesome to me when I saw that that came um, a couple years ago. And so I love them. They're called First Draft Book Bar at Changing Hands. And if you're in Phoenix and watching this and you haven't been, you have to go. And if you're ever visiting here, you have to go. It's a great indie bookstore. The booksellers are so nice. I go to a book club through um, the First Draft Book Club and love that book club as well. Great conversations. I've read so many books through that book club that kind of got me more into reading. Um, the first one being Normal People. Well, it's weird trying to use your hand in the... Anyways, I'm really appreciative for that bookstore. I try to support it as much as I can. Yeah, love it. I just, <laughs> I just saw that one of you asked me a really inappropriate question. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. I'm not answering it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, another question. How do you pick what book to read next? And how do you balance new releases versus classics? So I am purely a mood reader. Uh, I've said this a couple times on my channel now, but I definitely just pick books up on a whim based on what I'm in the mood for at the time. Like I find my mood shifts all the time which has led to some chaotic messes of current reads. Like sometimes I've read like six books at a time and that's just kind of a mess in terms of remembering books. And like, I don't know, I, lately I've kind of changed my reading habits in the sense of me trying to focus on like maximum three books and trying to get through at least one of them before picking up a new book. 
because yeah, I was finding it hard to keep track of the books and I would put one down for too long and then kind of forget what was going on. And you just kind of, you're not, you're not as immersed in the book when you read that way, I find. And so, yeah, I'm trying out limiting it, but sometimes it's hard because I want to just, especially like when I buy a new book, I want to pick it up right away and start reading it, but I have to like resist the urge. So yeah, purely a mood reader. And in terms of the next question about how I balance new releases and classics, I mostly focus on new releases, I must say. But lately I have been trying to read more classics. Like recently I read Jane Eyre, which was amazing. And right now um, I'm about halfway through Frankenstein, which is also incredible. And so, so I definitely see myself continuing reading classics um, regularly throughout my normal reading because I'm really enjoying them. And so it's definitely a focus of mine also in 2021 is to get a good mix of like current reads, arcs, backlist books, and classics. So I guess we'll see if that works. <laughs> Next one, your favorite vampire from books or a movie franchise. Um, I love this question because growing up I loved vampires. I still do. And I would always be a vampire for like Halloween and stuff. For this one, I want to say Salem's Lot by Stephen King. The vampire in that one, I think his name was Harlow. Is that right? Barlow. Oops. Barlow in that book, he's very creepy, and I really enjoyed um, reading that one about a year ago. I think he's a super creepy vampire and written so well. Um, I know that book is kind of like an homage to Dracula, um, but Barlow was really well done, and I really, really like that book. Um, aside from that, this is actually more so like a video game um, answer, but there were movies based on it, but I don't know if any of you guys played Blood Rain back in the day. I know I had it like on GameCube, and I think they made a sequel as well. I don't think there was a third one, but... I loved her, she's so badass. And I wish they would bring that series back because I loved those games. And so yeah, Blood Rain is sick as hell. Hey, next one, how the heck do you read so fast? I kind of just use the same tips that many booktubers, like when they make, how do I read more videos? Um, I just use those tools. I guess the one main one is that I've really stopped watching TV significantly since I picked up reading a lot in the last year. I barely watch TV and so like most of my nighttime like just relaxing is reading. And so I think the number one thing if you want to read more is to just prioritize it. I wouldn't force yourself to try to read more if you don't really feel like you want to, just do what you want. But for me, like what I really love doing is reading and so it naturally just becomes a main thing that I do every day. Another tip is to listen to audiobooks as well. I tend to listen to audiobooks while reading a book or just having one going um, in my, my current lineup of books and that's been a really great way of getting in more reading while I'm driving or putting laundry away or doing dishes or something. Like it's just a really great way of getting in more pages whether it's the same book that you're currently reading physically or it's a separate book. So yeah, those are like my two main things. Okay, next, top five authors. God damn it. I did not prepare for this video and I'm, I'm afraid to answer because I'm gonna like play it back and be like, damn it, I missed one. But I'm gonna go off the top of my head. Tessa Moshevag, you all already know. Donna Tartt, Stephen King. Oh my God, I'm stressed out. Oh my God, I'm stressed out. <laughs> Why can't I not think of authors right now? Hold on. Oh, Sally Rooney. <laughs> and Kieran, if you're watching this, would you die if I said Ali Smith? <laughs> Uh, Karen like notoriously does not like Allie Smith, um, but no, I've only read Autumn by her. I'm gonna go with Gia Tolentino, a nonfiction writer. Um, I think she's incredible. I read her book Trick Mirror. I keep talking about that book like in every video, um, but I also love her stuff from The New Yorker and I just, I think she has a really promising career ahead of her and I can't wait to see what she keeps diving into in um, future articles and books and hopefully she writes fiction, fingers crossed. I'm already mad at that list of five authors. I feel like I'm missing people, but I think it's a good well-rounded one for me. Someone asked, what do I do? Um, I am a lawyer. I work for a company in-house doing a mix of litigation and corporate work. I've been there for a little over a year now. Oh my God, top five music artists. Jesus. You know what, I'm just gonna go with the vibes. Top of my head, I'm not committing to anything. Nicki Minaj, Paramore, Lady Gaga, Kehlani. Ooh, who's a good fifth one? Beyonce. There we go. <laughs> oh my god, but I also love like Ariana Grande, Rihanna. I love pop music, if you can't tell. Lord, Jesus Christ. If my life was made into a novel, who would you like to write it and why? These are like good ass questions. First author that popped into my head is Brandon Taylor because the man can write some prose. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Brandon Taylor for now. I was gonna include him in my top five authors, but I'm a little hesitant to like include debut authors in my list. Like when I've, when I've read one book, like I'm not sure. I like to have at least like two under my belt to know whether they're like top echelon, you know? But I already know like when I read the second book, he's gonna be in my top five. So I should just put him in there. But uh, yeah, I'd like him to write my novel. <laughs> Another question, do you reread books? I don't. I do really want to though. I have a couple books like on my list that I really want to reread, including Amotessa Moshevag's Death in Her Hands because people were on here dragging the book and on Goodreads and on Bookstagram and I am not having it. Not on, not on my watch. Do you guys know that meme? <laughs> not on my watch. Not on my watch. 
So yeah, I'm going to reread Death in Her Hands, then I'm going to read McGlue by Tessa Moshvag, and then I'm going to make the long-awaited and personally highly anticipated book, book, video on Tessa Moshvag and why I love her and why she's kind of underrated in my eyes and why people seem to really hate her books or love them, but I'm, I'm going to go into it then. Recently, I was on um, Robbie's podcast, his handle is at moby.ficked. He has a really great podcast in which he talks about books and interviews authors, and he's had me on a couple times, which is super awesome. But I was on his episode for Sisters by Daisy Johnson, and I had read that like a month or two before we did the podcast. And so I went back and like reread passages of it to remind myself of like events that happened, and I really, really liked rereading it, especially because that book is kind of like twisty and like seeing the way the author sets everything up through a reread was so beneficial for the discussion and just my understanding of the book. And so it's kind of opened my eyes to rereading and maybe putting that more like in my constant um, rotation of like things that I read. Yeah, I do want to start doing that more because I really see the benefit in it. Another one I want to reread is Real Life by Brandon Taylor because um, that's like my favorite book of the year so far. And Luster by, by Raven Leilani. Really want to read that again. Another question, should the artists be separated from their art? And this is another heavy hitting question. You know, I actually really want to do some more research on this topic because this is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately with like the JK Rowling controversy and um, people that are still like supporting her despite her being a turf and being extremely transphobic and just like laying it on thick in her in her tweets and in her essay that she wrote and it's just disgusting. I, I've seen arguments on both sides saying where like you can separate the art from the artist and just appreciating art on its own, which I, I understand. And I, but at the same time, like, I think there's a fine line in terms of actually, like, commercially supporting an artist that is bad for whatever reason. Like, for example, J.K. Rowling. Like, obviously, I love Harry Potter. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I love it so much. It helped me get back into reading extensively. And um, I would love to, like, collect the illustrated editions that were coming out. Um, I have all four of them so far that have been released. But, like, I won't complete my collection because I'm not supporting JK Rowling who is actively being transphobic and I can't support her monetarily even though I know she's already rich as hell and like what's the real impact but still supporting someone that is transphobic and I just can't do it. Another example is like with the most recent in music news like Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion situation people that are still supporting Tory Lanez despite him shooting Megan Thee Stallion it's just like crazy to me like what so and like I would never want to listen to his music ever again like notably Kehlani took him off of her track Can I which I thought was awesome and what people should be doing but I do like see certain things especially with like deceased artists like H.P. Lovecraft for example who's known to be very racist among many things um it seems kind of more acceptable in my mind to read his stuff knowing that like especially if it's in the public domain like it seems way more okay to read something from someone that was problematic and just making sure you know what was wrong about them and just keeping that in mind and knowing like who you're supporting and what they stand for i don't know basically i, I don't know and that's a really good question and if anyone has like any um good articles or books or essays about that topic i would love to read them because it's been on my mind a ton lately um so yeah it's a really great question though the last question for this is what is something you learned about yourself since you started reading and doing bookstagram the thing I discovered most about myself, I always kind of knew this. I've always loved books since I was a kid, but most recently getting way more into bookstagram is I just realized how much I absolutely love, love, love books, especially fiction. And I'm just so glad that I've gotten more involved in books in bookstagram and talking with so many people that are so into the same books that I am. I'm just so grateful for it. And so, yeah, I think that's one thing that I've learned more about myself is just how much I love books. I'm so excited to see what I read and how my reading tastes develop and just learning so much through books. I just think books are fucking awesome. So, so that about does it. If you submitted a question, thank you so much for being um, inquisitive about me and my reading tastes. And I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this Q and A and learning a little bit more about me. It was mostly bookish, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. So until next time, I forgot about my beer while I was doing this. I'm still pretty full. Cheers.